This is Cindy Blair. Welcome to AMOA's Art Together Tuesday. As part of our She Persisted exhibition, we're sharing stories of perseverance from exhibition supporters who are leaders in our community. I guess, you know, everyone talks about when their children are born and that's like the, the big pivotal moment. Well, it was 1997 and I had just started law school. Um, big plans, I'd finished my master's degree and um, my son uh, was born eight weeks premature in the uh, middle of my second semester of law school um, with a very rare non-genetic structural birth defect that would only be described as catastrophic. And so multiple anomalies that caused mo multiple surgeries over the course of the next five years um, while I remained in law school. Um, my son had 67 different procedures. His chest was cut open three times and his esophagus was attached to his stomach as he was born without it being attached. He was tube fed for more than three years and, and those five years really changes your life. It can do one of two things. It can break you or it can really forever change you as a person. And, and what that experience did is it changed my entire perspective on how you look at things and, and what happens to people and, and why and how you really are in a position to not be in control of anything, but what you're in control of is what your reaction is to everything. And I've used that in my career and in, in my personal life, and it really changed me for the better. I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but um, I am a different, stronger, um, more legitimate, more authentic person because of that experience. And he is completely fine. He is uh, well, he's be 24 this year, um, and he is in medical school and um, has had, although a bumpy start, um, has certainly turned into an exceptional and just incredible human being. I can remember having to persist while studying in law school. And it was a very, very challenging time for me because I came from a family that had little education. I came from a family where there were no attorneys in my family, so it's not like I had someone to lean on to ask legal questions of. But more importantly, it was very challenging to me because I had to work two jobs while in law school. And when you get to law school, they tell you, you can't work, you shouldn't work, that it's not recommended because you'll need all of your time in order to be successful in school. But I didn't have that choice. And in not having that choice, I knew that the only option that I had was to work while in law school. And so I worked two jobs. I worked as a teaching assistant there on the campus, and I also worked at a local grocery store. And so my days were spent, let's say if I started at class at eight in the morning, I went to class from eight until about one or two. And from there, I was a teaching assistant there on the campus, and I did that until about 4.30. And then as I was driving across town to the grocery store, I would change out of my school attire, which was usually professional attire, into my uniform for the grocery store as I was driving. So the wonderful thing was that I was able to sit in traffic because there was probably traffic jams. And I could change into my uniform and walk right into the grocery store and put on that friendly attitude to uh, just love on my customers. I loved every moment of working at the grocery store. It gave me the opportunity to meet many people. It gave me the opportunity to appreciate how hard people work for little wages. And after I would finish my shift at the grocery store, which was usually 10 p.m. or 11 p.m., I had hundreds of pages that I needed to read in order to prepare for the next day for school. And so I had to go home and do that. I had no choice to say, I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm overwhelmed. I had to go home and read those hundreds of pages. And usually in law school, you have to read it multiple times in order to truly understand or think you understand what it is that you've read. And so that would cause for me to, most nights, get little to no sleep. And so now that's how I'm accustomed to surviving off of about four hours of sleep because my body was trained that that's what I had to do. And so after doing my studying and getting a little nap, I start the day next day all over again to persist, to be able to live my dream and fulfill my purpose. 
in law school, it's very competitive. I went to law school with a 10 month old, my firstborn. When I started, he was 10 month old, just started in the walk. By the second year, I was pregnant with my second child. And when I graduated law school, she was one and he was three. Um, and I can remember people hoping that I would drop out because I was pregnant. Um, and I, you know, went through and, and did it. I remember saying uh, I was having contractions for a final exam. Um, I had asked through a, one of my uh, teachers to, there was a dead week they call it in law school where weeks between school ending, the classes ending and the, and the final starting. In law school you have one exam per class, the final, that's it. It's a, it's a pass or fail. Um, so you don't have any midterms or anything. Everything you learn over the semester is put into one exam, so it's a lot of information. So my teacher saw I was very much pregnant and asked uh, his supervisor, the chancellor, if I could have a separate test the week of dead week, a week early so I wouldn't have to worry about going into labor. And I was denied that opportunity because I was told by the, chan the vice chancellor that pregnancy is a voluntary condition. Um, so, you know, I put my big girl panties on and I went and I took that test even though I was having contractions. Um, so there's there's people out there that want to see us fail and it's just a matter of making up your mind that you're not going to and then surrounding yourself with the people that want to see you succeed and, and finding those core people that are your support system. I keep hearing the same thing from a lot of my friends and a lot of my clients, um, predominantly women, um, and the same story is I know I'm not eating good enough, I know I'm not doing enough working out, I'm not taking good care of myself, I know if I just did this, this, and this, I would feel much better and I would be much better and at some point I just kind of stopped and said, you know what, I think you're doing a really good job. You've survived a pandemic, most of my friends have survived being sick from the deadly virus, we've survived two hurricanes, we've survived two ice storms. And we just keep getting up and coming back and coming back and coming back. And when our great, great, great grandchildren look back on us, they're going to think, man, they were tough, tough women. We all have our own stories too. You know, I own my own business and um, I had other things that went on and we're, we're all going through something. But we just keep getting up and coming back. And so I just think it's... Um, really cool when I kind of look at other women and see um, how inspiring they are because they just keep getting up and keep going on. So all that other, I should be doing this and I should be doing that, I should be, you know, I'm over it. I'm tired. I don't want to do all that, you know, anymore. Uh, let's lift each other up, support each other, and, and let each other know we're all, you know, pretty strong women here. Look what we've survived.